Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here with the blog to watch. I'm here interviewing uh, Mr. Pascal Raffi uh, Beauvais, the owner of Beauvais. We're here in Los Angeles and we're going to look at some of the new 2014 watches as well as talk a little bit about the brand. Pascal, thanks for talking to me. Um, so, so tell me, when did you acquire this historic brand and, and bring it into modern existence? Ariel, it was in 2001 when I fall in love with that beautiful house. It was exactly love at first sight. In 2001, when I made the decision to stop my pharmaceutical business, I made the decision to get retired and to take care also about my timepieces collection. And during that year, 2001, one of my bankers, who is a friend because I know him since 30 years, offered me investments in a lot of brands, as you say, but nothing was impacted representing my definition of true luxury in watchmaking. Up to the moment, he came one day with a Beauvais timepiece. In 2001, Beauvais was doing only 133 timepieces per year. Right. And when I saw that uniqueness, the pocket watch at the wrists, I understood on the spot that I was going, first of all, to pay myself a selfish, huge gift, is to answer with my definition of true luxury in watchmaking to one of my very important requests. What was that request? True luxury, Ariel, uh, I think people do a huge mistake uh, with the definition of luxury. They think that more you will see a brand in publications, it has or it is luxury or an item of luxury. For me, luxury is, first of all, because this is marketing, it's not for me luxury. Luxury has to be, first of all, a clear identity, an item that you recognize on the spot. It happens to you like it happens to me to be in public places and you see gentlemen with nice watches but sometimes you can get confused on the name of the brand because they sometimes, often, look like the same. Okay. With a Beauvais timepiece, that identity, which is the first asset of a true luxury, you cannot get confused. No. On another side, globalization has made also that everybody is running after quantities. Everybody, the majority of people. I consider that luxury with that uniqueness has to be in limited quantities because to respond to the will of the collectors to have uniqueness, quality, substance, patrimony, ancestral arts, you cannot do a lot of timepieces per year. The third thing, they must be handcrafted and with that uniqueness in the design, these limited quantities and handcrafted here you answer to the question of true luxury. Good. So, so let's just back up. The, the three things of luxury are exclusivity, mm -hmm. being able to distinguish the item, you can mm -hmm. recognize it, as well as hand craftsmanship. Exactly. I, I think a lot of people would agree with that. So, so when you when you acquired the the company in mm -hmm. two thousand one, um, what were some of the changes you made? I mean, how did you sort of add your own sense of character and personality? into the company? I think that, again, if, you, I, if I had to develop a house for quantities, I'm totally unable to do it. I did it in pharmaceuticals because you know that pharmaceuticals are by definition uh, big quantities. Sure. But when we talk about luxury, for me, luxury has to be in limited quantities. So I was answering to my request, my way of living, where I hate to have what everybody has. I rather prefer to have things which correspond to me, that uniqueness, that substance, that density in quality, detail with good taste. And I wanted Bove to answer to that big question that a lot of collectors, because they live the experience of collecting watches from some brands in the 80s, in the 90s, where these brands were doing limited quantities, but nowadays are doing above 50 or 60,000 watches per year. Right, and they've changed, they've really changed. And it changes. That's why nearby globalization, nearby that word where the most important is to cover the maximum of uh, room and place, 
I rather prefer to offer to the collectors uniqueness and limited quantities. So how? So in limited quantities, like what would you say on average? Is we are number you're making in year? average per year, and I don't want to go over that quantity. We are due between three thousand and three thousand two hundred timepieces per year. So and that's, for a really, us, that's a really exclusive number. It's an exclusive number and it is impossible on my point of view to do 10,000 timepieces like we do our timepieces per year. Right. Even though our house has a capacity already since today of 6,000 timepieces per year. But why do I insist in having an extra capacity? It's because all the ancestral arts that we do develop in our houses need requests to have new talents <coughs> for yeah. the next generations and sometimes it takes between five to seven years to have a skilled young uh, engraver miniature painter miniature painter to express its art and to be really in full accomplishment so it's also a huge investment for the future yeah and so that's that's interesting point you bring up about um, training these individuals to sort of um, perform these these very old and sometimes very interesting types of you know artistic um, crafts. Um, what would you say are some of the key strengths of the brand when it comes to um, some of those artistic techniques that you can apply into the timepieces? We were talking about luxury uh, a few minutes ago. <clears throat> right. One of the key elements of true luxury has to be education. Education is the essence of everything. One of the keys of Beauvais today is, and the hugest success since 14 years, is that unbelievably passionate team that we do have in Beauvais. You have 142 artisans split in three loca different locations in Switzerland, but when you do travel all through these three locations, you will discover people sharing the same values for patrimony, quality, uniqueness, and then the beautiful work handmade. Right. This is the first strength. And when you do have that strength, you can defend your values. And these values are based on the unique patrimony that our house has since nearly two centuries. Yeah, it's a very we're, historic brand. And you know, I, uh, we build tomorrow with success. Whenever <coughs> we never forget from where we come, you study a lot from the past to prepare the future. We don't have to be shy of that unbelievable patrimony because you are an expert, you know, like me, if we put at sight new materials of the beautiful modernity, and I do agree that these materials are useful, in terms of features, aren't we repeating on features what already existed in watchmaking two centuries ago? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's half of mechanical watchmaking. It's, it's interpreting the past and, and showing it off in a new way, but also being faithful to everything that's been done before. I mean, that's what people are looking for. But by the same time, defending one very important point. I am a collector, you are a collector, is to offer to the collector more density, more art, more substance than the price he's even paying. It's a collectible item. Right. It's for the next generations. <clears throat> it's a part of our culture that we need to give and to offer to our selfish pleasure of gentlemen who love timepieces, but also to live for the next generations a testimony that it is still possible in this world to defend values. You, you mentioned something interesting that I think people don't quite understand today, and you said density, which I think does apply to some of the historic principles that many have um, assigned to high-end timepieces and jewelry, where they would try to take a small object and try to include as many forms of art and complication and, mm -hmm. and preciousness as possible. And you do see that in, in a lot of, um, not a, you know, a lot of timepieces today, but I don't think it's as common as, there's a lot of minimalism as well. But in the Beauvais timepiece, you have, you can have elements of jewelry, mm -hmm. hand engraving, painting, um, enameling, of course, mechanical complication. Um, and those are things which I think are, uh, something the collectors don't always understand was historically mm -hmm. very, very important in regard to uh, what a, a precious timepiece was about. So how did you sort of rediscover some of those values? I have to, I, I appreciate very much what you are saying, but I need to, to go back to one thing. In Beauvais, when you take the pocket watches of the 19th century and you take our timepieces of today, you will see a perfect and legitimate link between the past and today. 
Right. It's not always the case. In Beauvais, logics are always here. When we talk about engraving, decorative arts, enameling, settings, since 1845 it was already the case in Beauvais. Right. So to say, when you defend values and patrimony, logics have always to be here. And it's not only the fact to mix all these arts, is the ability to mix all these arts in a way which stays elegant, refined, and sober. Right. As you know in our timepieces, because I don't believe in fashion, fashions are by definition ephemere. Tradition values educate generations. And the link between the 19th century and today is obvious in Beauvais even though we are very proud to use and beautifully use the materials of our century. Right, so you have three timepieces in front of you, very beautiful ones. Will you show me perhaps some examples of how you are connecting some of these values from the past into these modern timepieces of today? I need also to justify all what I'm saying since before. Okay. It's very easy to talk in life, but the best way perhaps is to show that what we defend is true through the timepieces. I was talking about the unique identity of a Beauvais timepiece. The 19th century pocket watch of Beauvais is just here in between my hands. A clear identity, unique, you cannot get confused with this shape and this design. By the same time, today we have been able in the 21st century we have been able to present the timepiece as a wrist timepiece, but by the same time, simply pushing the crown like the pocket watches of the 19th century, you will open your case back, you will take up your strap without any tool and any effort, and you'll have here the most unique table clock that you can find. That's really cool. Another thing which is very important, you can take your strap, you will reverse the way you put your strap in the case, and when you need more art to be expressed, or in the evening like I do, when I don't have any more the pressure of the day, I wear my timepiece on the other side, because luxury is also emotion. And so, this miniature painting that you see is the reproduction of a pocket watch of the 19th century. And this dial needs three months through microscope to be hand painted. That's, so, you're, so basically, it's interesting, you, in this watch, not only is it a convertible, you can have a pocket watch, a desk clap, or a wristwatch, but the watch itself is double-sided. It's double-sided without any tools. It's on top of that a table clock and a pocket watch by adapting very easily the chain which comes in the bow also. And then you will close your case back and you have in between your hands a summary of what can be most unique, exclusive and handcrafted. That's, that's, that's interesting. And what, you know, in terms of the overall um, production, these types of watches, how many of these are made a year? These are obviously very complicated. You have a tourbillon. And, I believe it has a perpetual calendar. This type of watch would enjoy what, what type of production numbers? I totally disagree with two words you are using, and we know each other very well. You are using production. Production has a meaning of quantity or mass quantity. At the same time, you were talking about a watch. Ariel, what we do is a skinny item. What we do, you feel and live with it every day. I rather prefer to talk about a timepiece. A watch gives you the time, like your iPhone, my Blackberry, all the clocks in the airports, wherever we are. A timepiece must bring emotion. Luxury is emotion. That's why I rather prefer to talk about the timepiece. Time piece. This being said, this being said, on this perpetual calendar retrograde, on a to with a tourbillon, which cage is a 13.5 millimeters of diameter. The perpetual calendar is located on two-thirds of the platinum. 
can you imagine with such big windows and you have not even one wheel which is going on top of the cage of the tourbillon because this movement is also patented the way to have and to display the power reserve you can see it through the camera just below the dial i think you can discover it just here below noon yep and if you look at the windows of the perpetual calendar can you imagine to have such big windows only on two-thirds of platine if we take the logics the bow the crown the split here with the same hand indicating the power reserve the cage of the tourbillon and a tourbillon on a pocket watch has legit legitimacy yes as a wristwatch yes it does actually. not so well not as a wristwatch but that's they were invented for pocket watches that's why perhaps a bovetan piece is the most legitimate to talk about tourbillons good point thank you that's interesting so that that's a beautiful piece so show us um, some of the other ones. I, there's a there's a recital twelve which I happen to like a lot. Which is is it is it the thinnest recital that you've made ever? The recital twelve is the coronation of twelve years through which we want. I wanted. I was dreaming of having our in-house movement. I cannot say basic movement because this is not has nothing to see with the basic movement. You know in Tecamas that all our tourbillons are 100% made in-house up to the full escapement. You came to visit our facilities? Never? No, not yet. Oh, so you are the most welcome to discover that every single spare part is made in-house. So the, the movements 100% are made in-house? Yes. That's a really important thing for people to know. It's very important to know that also in our facility, Dimier, we don't only do spare parts for our movements, we also do for aeronautics and medical companies because we are recognized and respected for the most, the smallest, the most uh, tiny uh, pieces for reliability. And you know that in uh, medical care and aeronautics, you need a very high level also of quality. Absolutely. Recital 12, to present it, is our latest movement. I would like you to see the ergonomy of this timepiece. It's a 42 millimeters with a seven days power reserve. Quality of the finishings is exactly the same that we display in our tourbillons. It's not because it is an hour, minute and split second that we're going to talk about a quality which is not the same than the tourbillons. And at 9 p.m. you can discover the second but with one feature, which is a second, a coaxial second. If you return your timepiece, the second will still turn clockwise. With the, with the bracelet, it's not easy for you to see with your camera. But I think you discovered it during the Beauvais Salon when you were in Geneva. Yeah, it's really you cool. It's like it goes right through the movement. This being said, again, quality in Beauvais standards, it's an enamel dial. The finishings are, as I was saying before, the same level as the tourbillons. And this timepiece is the first movement with our minute and split second that we presented this year. So this is a, this is a brand new movement. Are you going to be doing more with this movement? Because I understand also that the um, Recital 15 uses the same um, basic architecture. Is this a movement that you're going to be building a lot of other things on top of? All our medium complications up to the chronograph will be vested thanks to this movement. It's cool. What, what is the name of this movement? Virtuoso 2. Okay, so this is the Virtuoso 2. <clears throat> That's it. So this is the Virtuoso 2 movement inside of the Recital 12 uh, timepiece. That's great. So what's the, what's the other one you have on the table? You have a multiple time zone launch. One of my favorite babies, a triple time zone, totally developed in-house with a tourbillon again, the 13.5 millimeter cage of tourbillon, and a lot of features which are always the detail that we love to put in our timepieces. You have here a triple time zone Ariel, and if you look, the three, uh, the three time zones are perfectly balanced. One at 3 p.m., one at 9 p.m. with a day and night disc. The discs are not printed Ariel. The discs in our standards have to be in appliques. Interesting. Mother of Pearl subdials and the cage of the tourbillon, as I told you, with the same historical finishes that we have, which are perfect finishes. 
Now, I have a question. So, I've seen various different versions of this specific, specific timepiece. You know, do you do a lot of piece uniques? Is there a lot of originality? Is it just a few set models? Because it's interesting for me to know that when Beauvais has a collection, there's also a lot of variability in there. There might be special models you make. Would you say that's the case, or you have sort of a set amount of models and that's all that you produce? No. In fact, the passion that I have for, for our house comes also for the fa from the fact that I love to customize the requests of our collectors. We have, since the first day in 2001, more than 50% of our timepieces which are customized timepieces. That's a lot. From all countries, different cultures, and this, this participates also of the passion of the artisans. You know that the artisans, the more you will give them customized timepieces, <coughs> more happy they are. It's interesting how different parts of the world, uh, clients have different types of tastes. Mm -hmm. How would you say the tastes of, you know, say, uh, a, a typical client, not that there is a typical client, but someone in uh, North America would differ from, some, say, someone in Asia? Very, uh, I would say, I don't see a big difference. Really? And I tell you why. When we talk about true luxury, colors can change. A subject can change because the subject or colors will talk much more to the, the person. But when we talk about the techniques we are using, people are very keen to see true art displayed in the timepieces. So to say, if we take a subject in Asia Pacific, the same subject will be asked in the United States of America, but with a different interpretation on colors, settings, and all the model of the timepiece. But all the values, the important values that we do display are accepted, recognized, and respected all over the world. That's interesting. So here in Los Angeles, uh, last night we had a cool event, the uh, Hollywood Dominoes, mm -hmm. um, in, in collaboration with the Artists for Peace and Justice. That's, that's a great charity. Um, tell us a little bit about Beauvais' connection with them. A connection of values, of human beings. I firmly believe that in life you can stay 20 years nearby people and you don't really know them. And sometimes life offers you magic moments where you spend a few minutes with people and you understand on the spot that you, you share the same values. Yes, thanks to Daya Fernandez, a big heart Daya Fernandez, I had the honor to meet Paul Agis and David Bell. This was three years ago. And after 10 minutes listening, not hearing, because there is a big difference, as we know, be between hearing and listening, listening to that passion, honesty, authenticity of two gentlemen, defending a cause for children in Haiti of, after what happened in 2008 with the earthquake. When you stop two minutes and you consider Paul Agis and you say to yourself, this gentleman is a director, recognized, respected everywhere on, the, on earth. What would have been his interest to defend the children of Haiti if it was not sincere? Right. Does he need in his life to put his name if he was not a firm believer that these children need help? There is not a single difference between a child or another one suffering. They all deserve respect and help. And then Traveling these minutes, which became after five hours talking and sharing values, passion, generosity, listening to David Bell, the CEO of APJ, that authentic man who spends his time like Paul in Haiti. These two gentlemen are not defending a cause by seated here in LA. They go to Haiti. They share the life of the children. They built a school in Haiti because a school is education. That education will prepare the children for the next generations. You understand that between you timepieces where you share every day of your life the passion of your artisans. To do a timepiece you need human beings. Human beings with passion, with education. And then the link with APJ is legitimate. And then you understand that destiny made a beautiful thing is to meet these two gentlemen. Thanks to Daya again. No, that, that, that's great. So what, what are fans of Beauvais 
uh, going to see in the next couple of years and what, what can they expect in terms of not only the development of the products but also of the brand um, as a personality around the world? Bové collectors deserve and will have like since 14 years now not products but creations with the same density in art, reliability, uniqueness and new features, useful features because I defend as a collector another idea big idea for me. I don't like to have necessarily a watchmaker when I'm enjoying my selfish pleasure of discovering living my timepieces. So for me, there is something very important. I need to be able by myself to fix, to tune, hmm. to clean my timepiece. In 2015 up to 2018, we will present every year a major novelty. 2015 is going to be a significant year. It will be the coronation of 14 years of dream. The dream I have for one time piece since the first day I took over Beauvais. But still defending the values we do have. We are not good to be followers. I think we, we all of us, we rather prefer to be opinion makers. Right. Opinion makers defending that in this globalized world, charisma is important, defending values is important, education is important, a true philosophy is important, servicing a collector is important, building something which lasts is important, and paying respect to a house like Beauvais, with nearly two centuries of history, you have that moral duty to defend one thing which is very important to me and very dear to me, that unbelievable Swiss patrimony, which is beautiful watchmaking. That's interesting. Well, that sounds great, Mr. Rafi. Thank you so much. I thank you, Ariel.